and through the person and work of Jesus Christ. That's, that's how much he loved us. And now it's up to us to repent and believe that message. You wanna make a bet? Do y'all believe in God or a creator or no? Yeah, I believe in God, I'm Catholic. Okay, what yeah, about you, Claire? I believe in God, I'm not, I'm like non-denominational. Okay. Yes, sir, what? I'll bet you $100, you don't have to pay me nothing. If I lose, I'll pay you. That if we did this publicly, at some point, your pastors and your leaders would say, tell you to stop talking to me. What's up, guys? Real quick, I want to let y'all know that I did get permission from the people in this video to share their responses. They knew I was making a YouTube video. And also, I had a lot more um, interviewees and a lot more interesting responses, but I didn't want to make a super long video just in case you guys didn't want to see all of it. I will make a part two if you want to see that in the comments down below. Let me know. Hope you guys enjoy. And this is a good one. Watch to the end. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Would y'all say you know for sure that you're going to heaven? I believe that the creator... There's one creator, but that we can't understand this creator and it's been distorted into many different religions. Yeah, I think I'd be going to heaven. I mean, I haven't like done anything really like know. that bad. I like, don't have like definite I certainty about it. Yeah. Gotcha. So. In God's eyes, the Bible talks about how 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 the Bible talks about yeah, yeah, I'd say so. In college right now, we live in a very postmodern culture, yeah. which that means everyone has their own subjective truth. Would you say, do you believe that there is such thing as objective truth? So there's, there's whether I believe in it or not, there's something that is very, they're still true. There's objective truth, but it bears no name. And that's, but once it takes on a name, it's no longer objective truth. The Bible talks about like how we will all be judged. You know, some people get away with stuff, like terrible stuff, yeah. but God will judge us all. Do you think that you would be innocent or guilty? 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 Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, I think if, like, somebody was, like, on their deathbed, like, no matter who it was, and, like, took God into their heart, like, I think they'd go to heaven. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And for me in my life, I, I gave my life to the Lord when I was around 16. But reading the scripture, the veracity of the Bible proves itself to be God's specific revelation to man and jesus if you look at the prophecies in the old testament he fulfills all of them we base our time system off of jesus and then he said that the gospel would spread and that's why i'm in here in, in norman oklahoma talking to you about the gospel 2021 let me, say this, let me say this on camera i don't want to cut you off oh no you're good you know like the 10 commandments mm -hmm. it talks about you should not lie you should not steal you should right. not murder and so there are some sins that are less than others but uh, i guess i'll just tell you really quick what i believe in and then i just want to hear your response and then mm -hmm. it'll be done so I believe, like the Bible says, we have all sinned and, sh and fallen short of the glory of God. Right. And unless you repent and believe the gospel, because God is uh, holy, not only is he loving and forgiving, but he's holy. Mm -hmm. In keeping with his holiness and justice, he has to punish uh, sinners, whether big or small. And so to your question, uh, how do you think people are saved then? You mentioned like accepting God in the heart. How do we become saved and made right with God, do you um, think? I mean, like, I think if you just like, I don't know, like if you're, if you're, if you haven't been like baptized or anything like that, like I think like even on your deathbed, like even if like it was like a serial killer or like a criminal like that, I think as long as they're like baptized and like um, just like, you know, kind of like apologize to God yeah. maybe, I think like it kind of like rights the wrongs. Keep on going, I'll let you finish. No, I would say that's why we're talking about this in 2021 and going back to my point about truth, I believe that God has revealed himself to all of mankind generally through creation, right? And we're made in God's image, unlike a flamingo, a cat, or a dog. We're made in God's image. All of us are from Adam and Eve. And if we humble ourselves, that's what God really is concerned about, whether you're prideful or humble. If we humble ourselves, cry out to God, I believe he will reveal himself to us. And he does that through the Holy Spirit, through the person and work of Christ, and through his word, which has power and authority. It proves itself as God's word. And when I read the scripture, I used to read it just to kind of know what it was, but now when I read it, believe it, and live it, I see the power of the scripture and things that I cannot explain God has done in my life through the, the power of scripture and the Holy Spirit in me. And, and, God, and the call of the gospel is not to call people to obey certain laws perfectly. That's pretty much what every other religion is, do more good than bad, but the, the message of the gospel is actually no, we're all sinners, but God in his love and kindness, in his, in his plan throughout redemptive history, is to reconcile us back to him through the person and work of Jesus Christ. That's that's how much he loved us. And now it's up to us to repent and believe that message. Okay, interesting. What do you think, Claire? I don't really know. 
know. I I don't personally think that you have to like do any specific action. Yeah. Like some true. people don't really have the opportunity to like learn about mm -hmm. God and like Christianity. So I mean I think as long as you like feel like responsible for your actions yeah. and I'll bet you a hundred dollars. You don't have to pay me nothing. If I lose, I'll pay you. That if we did this publicly, at some point, your pastors and your leaders would say, tell you to stop talking to me. If a pastor, for example, didn't want me talking to you or whatever, I know from the Bible, Jesus said, what you hear whispered in secret, proclaim on the rooftops. Right. Ephesians 6 says that uh, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities in the heavenly realms, the forces of evil, the, 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 the works of the devil, the God of this world. And that includes false religion. And then you're right, it will be put to the test. That's why the prophets from A to Z, guess what happened to them? They were all persecuted. Uh, Peter was hung upside down. Paul was killed. John was exiled to the island, island of Patmos. And so if I were to preach this message in other parts of the world, you're right. I might actually physically die. Here in America, it hasn't come to that point. Listen, it's at that point. It's actually at that point higher than you know. The Bible said, like you mentioned, believing in God. There's the thief, there's a story of the thief on the cross who died next to Jesus. He was actually hurl, like hurling insults at Christ. But then once he did realize that he was a sinner, yeah. he repented and put his trust in Jesus. And then Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So what I believe is what the Bible says, is we have to repent, which um, means like you ask God for forgiveness of your yes. sin and you want to turn from your sinful lifestyle. So for me, that was like, before, before I gave my life to Christ when I was like 16 or 17, I was just li literally like living for sin. Mm -hmm. Kind of like whatever I wanted to do, I yeah. would do. And then this is the most important part, which is the same as, it's like uh, two sides of the same coin, repentance and then belief in Jesus as your savior. And that's why, what, that's what makes the gospel so unique from other religions is that I know for sure I'm going to heaven, not because I'm better than Carly or Claire, mm -hmm. but because I truly have um, believed in Christ as my savior. Yeah. And now all my sins are forgiven. Uh, you think about the woman who cleaned out her whole house for, to find that one penny, the one drachma. Yeah, so, so you know, so you know, okay, you know scripture too. We just we're interpreting it differently. We're interpreting it differently because of what we've experienced, right? And then I understood. I, I heard my own words, but not my own voice. My own. It was my own voice in my head that said silently, unless because like I was confused. I was like, "What is that?" I didn't know, and I was like, "What well, is that Kundalini energy?" Probably, and I was like scared because it was powerful, and I was like, "I heard." unless the son of man be lifted up the sun like the sun we see out there unless the son of man be lifted up no man could be saved and then I, I understood the beauty of the text in a whole nother way to where i said oh my goodness i said if we don't experience it within we're missing out on the buffet and to respond to that i would say be careful listening to your voice within the bible says the heart is wicked and deceitful who can know it right the, the heart is wicked and deceitful who can know it and rather than looking in we look to the lord proverbs 3 5 through 6 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him he'll make your path straight and that's where so many people go astray is they think they can trust themselves but we're fallen we're deprived and we need to look to the savior and to his words for life outside of ourselves outside of michael turk looking to a savior but not everybody comes to understanding the same i came to my understanding through human consciousness, philosophy of symbols, mixed with the Bible and his teachings all at once, and a whole georgefox.com, a Christian website. So it took all this, and I remember when I was going through the change, it took eight days of stress, because my whole world was falling apart. So this guy, I went on to speak for about an hour long, I kid you not, and his biggest conundrum was looking to other sources other than scripture to interpret scripture. And that led to him having very new age beliefs, you know, looking to uh, the universe's energy and within yourself to find the truth that superseded the truth of scripture and its obvious meaning. I really appreciated his time and he was very amicable towards me and we will continue to talk, but I wanted to stop that conversation there for your guys' sake and the sake of time. And we will end this video with a testimony of a man I met who actually is going to become a pastor. It was his plan. And just listen up to his testimony real quick before this video is over. Thank you. Cool, man. Any other random thoughts about scripture, about the Lord, or your time here? How you seen God working in your life? Uh, yeah, it, so like a year and a half ago, uh, I had some issues going on in my life. You know, I uh, started getting uh, like not as good grades, you know. Yeah. I was kind of like addicted to porn. Yeah. Uh, just, it was probably about a year ago, like, you know, through that span that I just really started feeling God work in my life, you know, and uh, it, it's been a big change in me. Amen. Uh, and so, it's just, I don't know, just love God. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, brother.